Hello, good morning, uh, good afternoon even from uh, Japan. Uh, I'm going to do another pickup video. So uh, it's just stuff I picked up over the past two weeks basically. So it's, it's nothing huge or nothing significantly special or anything like that. But there's some good stuff in there, some highlights. So uh, <clears throat> let's have a little look. Okay? Uh, so f one of the first things I picked up was... Uh, Zelda the Wind Waker for the GameCube uh, and it was pretty cheap for a, a Zelda game uh, it was only 800 yen so eight eight dollars or five pounds it's got no instruction manual uh, I can't even play it because the GameCubes I've got two GameCubes but I don't have a power cable or a controller and I've got that I've got the Wii still uh, the Dragon Quest 10 Wii if you watched the previous video uh, but I don't have a GameCube controller to plug into one of the ports, otherwise I could play it. Uh, but it it looks great. I've never actually played it further than the first ten minutes. Uh, but I love the the animation in this game. It looks like looks like a good game. Some people love it. Some people don't like it because of it, obviously it came after Ocarina of Time, so it had to fill some big boots. Uh, another game that I bought was uh, so that was eight dollars. Uh, Grandia for the Sega Saturn. Uh, obviously, still not at the uh, point of understanding what these games are about. I played the English version about halfway through, and it was a really good, solid RPG. Uh, not exactly mind-blowing storyline or anything like that. It was run-of-the-mill storyline, but the, just the gameplay mechanics were enjoyable. Kind of like Breath of Fire 3 and 4, you know. Uh, wasn't like, you know, take your breath away storyline, like Final Fantasy sort of... Uh, level but it was definitely a great rpg great mechanics uh, works well and it's fun to play i so say grandia grandia 2 breath of fire 3 breath of fire 4 uh similar games in my opinion uh, uh another game i got i might have shown this in the last video i can't remember mickey mouse uh, for 80 yen so 50p uh dreamcast game i bought cool borders uh burn which actually is nothing like Cool Borders 1 or 2 for the PS1. I thought it was Cool Borders 2 because when I looked at the back, I saw the half pipe. And of course, there's the half pipe version on uh, Cool Borders 2 where you you can play the alien and stuff and jump really high. Uh, but yeah, this, this is a standalone game. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is a standalone game. And I always loved the Cool Borders series. It was a great, great series. Uh, and this in particular was, uh, not this particular game, but uh, this particular s uh, snowboard. Uh, SSX was good, but I still preferred Cool Borders. I thought it was the best one, in my opinion. So, yeah, I got that for two, 200 yen, $2 or pound thirty, roughly, something like that. Uh, okay, and I also got an another Dreamcast game. This is called The Gates of El Dorado, or something like that. El Dorado Gato, so the El Dorado Gate or the Gates of El Dorado, uh, and it, it looks like an RPG uh, made by Capcom. Uh, it just, it looked uh, the animation. I, I I played it yesterday actually, uh, and the animation is really really pretty. Uh, now the Dreamcast as well is is very pretty. The graphics absolutely amazing for the day. And in my opinion, I mean, I've got the Dreamcast set up. I'm going to try and show uh, some gameplay of a game in a sec. Not like uh, hooked up to the TV for a recorder, but it'll be like sort of ghetto style uh, from afar uh, with balancing the, the phone. Uh, but basically, it's just some of the prettiest colours. Uh, it's far, it looks much better than the PS2 uh, and sometimes better than the PS2 games. Definitely looks better than the PS1. Uh, now, we have to remember that I'm playing on NTSC, uh, which is coined the nickname Not The Same Colour, NTSC, because the colours weren't very good. Uh, they couldn't, because they only had S-Video and component cable, uh, which wasn't quite up to RGB standards, which is, luckily, us in Europe, uh, we were lucky to have SCAR and stuff for, for the latter, for the later uh, consoles, you know. So, I think from Saturn onwards... Uh, we had SCART uh, and Nintendo it would have been 
uh, I'm sure you can get uh, Super Nintendo. You can get a bloody uh, SCART cable. So yeah, it's really handy. So the colours aren't quite as good on, especially on a HD TV. They're not quite as good as you would have on a, uh, say, let's say a CRT uh, monitor or, or TV uh, in Europe with a SCART cable. Uh, you'd be kicking butt with the picture uh, for a lot of these games. The colours would be great. But again, you'd be playing at 50 hertz unless unless the, the the TV could support 60 hertz, and then you could switch the Dreamcast, I think, to 60 hertz in Europe. Uh, I believe you could do that. Uh, so, but yeah, that it was only 90 cents, so it was like 50p or maybe less, less than 50p. So it was well worth getting. I don't know if it's that good, but it looked good anyway. It looked pretty. So. Uh, I picked up, of course, within two days. I, I had my arm. This, this is something that I window shopped for, but it's Grandia 2 for the Dreamcast. But it comes with a, a music CD as well. So that's the front cover. And it's quite a pretty front cover. Uh, and this is the music CD inside. So this is the front of the music CD. Uh, it's got some sort of inlay. It's all intact. Uh, there's some game art there. Uh, some more game art and a map of what potentially is Grandia 2's world and there's some real life pictures maybe of what some, some of the game art was probably based on and there is a music CD called Melodia uh, oh, I don't want to scratch it too much so Melodia is the name of the CD and it, yeah, it's all pretty and it comes in a nice little case Grandia 2 as well was a very good game uh, and far superior on the Dreamcast uh, compared to the PS2 version. The same goes for uh, Skies of Arcadia uh, for the Dreamcast, far superior version to the uh, GameCube version. The Dreamcast version is superior to the GameCube version. Uh, just the, the way the game, uh, get, uh, the Dreamcast sort of handled graphics, uh, it makes the games seem a lot slicker. Uh, they seem to just move well. And just playing with the pad as well, they respond so well, uh, the games, the Dreamcast games. Uh, compared to the PS1 games as well. I mean, PS1 uh, was a great console. It's more the games. The games are really good because the developers really got behind the PS1 because uh, it was uh, one of the first uh, CD-based consoles. Uh, but yeah, uh, Grandia 2, very nice little package there. That's the back of the box, uh, the main packet, so... Yeah, that was that, and uh, what I've got to show you as well, I've got some, I haven't picked up Super Famicom games in ages, like, uh, they're, I'd, I'd pick up more, but they're not in the local shops, you have to travel quite far to find them. Uh, there is one local shop, uh, which is the next game I'll show you, uh, where I got Grandia 2, uh, Gates of Eldorado, and Cool Borders. I also picked up uh, Street Fighter 2 Turbo uh, for the... For the Super Famicom, there's one little. If you look at the flap, it's slightly bent, uh, but apart from that, it really is in nice condition. And for 100 yen, uh, by the way, Grandia was uh, 500 yen, so it was five dollars. But you kind of expect that it's a uh, limited edition pack, and it's not in the best condition, but it's still nice uh, to have. So yeah, this is Street Fighter 2 Turbo uh, for the Super Famicom, and really is in very good condition. It even comes with all the all the uh, registration card and the manuals, like mint more or less, and the games in a baggie, and all of this for one dollar, one dollar. So I was just like, "Yep, I'm having that." So, uh, yeah, took that as well. So really, really, really happy with that. Uh, I love Super Famicom games because of the boxes, you know, the game art, the, the fact that not many of them survived. Most of them are cartridges, you know. So. It's great, great, great to collect Super Nintendo, Super Famicom games. I, I totally think it's the best console to collect for, uh, in my opinion. Uh, some people might disagree. Uh, okay, next game. Super Famicom game. Uh, great game. Uh, obviously, everyone loves Final Fight 2. I remember going around the kid's house when I was younger. And his parents, he was spo the spoiled kid. And, uh, his parents bought him... Uh, Super Nintendo from America so he had the square cartridges so he used to get all of these games and we'd go around there and play them first and this was 1000 yen this was $10 so 
But as you can see, it's very glossy. Uh, one slight uh, line down that flap, but this flap's nice. Uh, again, in very good condition inside. Very good condition uh, manual. Let's get that a bit closer. Very good condition manual and uh, car is nice and shiny as well. Labels nice and shiny, and the back. Oh, there's a bit of bit of discoloration there. I can always swap out the back, but I probably won't even bother. Uh, but yeah, Final Fight 2, great game. Can't remember if it's two player. Uh, probably isn't two player. I think it's not two player. Uh, but still. Uh, I look forward to playing that when I can actually uh, get around to buying a, a working Famicom. Okay, so next game I bought was Albert Odyssey 2. So this is an RPG uh, and it cost $3. Uh, I, I won't open it up uh, because we're going to run out of time. Uh, lastly, for the Super Famicom box games, this is uh, one of my favourite games for the Super Famicom. Rock and Roll Racing. Uh, it's got so many great memories for me playing it with my, my family, and my cousins, my Close family, my little brother, uh, two player, a uh, split screen. It's got some Ozzy Osbourne in there, it's got some Born to Be Wild. Uh, uh, Notice that Namco is called Namcot, uh, don't ask me why. And I'm sure Interplay, uh, which were the actual game designers, I believe, uh, and uh, Namco would have been. Uh, developers or whatever you call it Christ knows uh, but yeah it's funny but it looks like that game will be completely in English so I, I also got a Final Fantasy uh, Wonder Swan in basically mint condition uh, for $30 Rock and Roll Racing was $10 by the way it's in really good condition inside as well Puyo Puyo for 100 yen as well too for the Game Gear so I'm just going to take you over to my Star Buy, which was basically uh, Dreamcast uh, for $5. It was in the junk section. It, it didn't work. Uh, also, Street Fighter Third Strike. Uh, when I bought the console, Street Fighter Third Strike was inside the console. So I was really happy and it cost $5. So I picked it up straight away, took it to the counter. Uh, the guy didn't say anything about the game being inside. I thought, cool, sweet, take it. Uh, I also found uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 uh, for $3. So I got two of the best fighting games ever for $8 and a Dreamcast. Uh, but I had to pay $5 for this pad uh, and the VMU, which was inside as well. And $3 for the cable. So it was about $17 for the entire setup, which was, yeah, pretty reasonable in my opinion. Uh, well, amazing. Uh, in the junk section of hard off uh, these consoles they're not uh, guaranteed to work so they come with no warranty at all so uh, you just sort of take it on luck the fact that it had street fighter third strike in it the fact that i've been looking for a, a dreamcast for a while as well uh, for cheap i don't want to pay 45 dollars which they were the working ones with all the cables i thought nah i can do it myself and i did uh, so i got it for 17 dollars uh, but that is with Third Strike and Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and a VMU, everything, everything, basically. So over the moon with that. So I've got about a minute left of video, so I'm just gonna try and play uh, a bit of this. This is gonna be wedged between my legs, so hopefully you can see Street Fighter vs. Strike. Obviously I'm being battered here, but let's see a bit of uh, Dudley. Uh, the screen's cut off at the top and the bottom because this is a HD TV. And I, I really don't know how to fix it. Uh, I might be able to do something in the menu, but let's just uh, exit. Quick game, yeah. Street Fighter Third Strike, yeah. Arcade, yeah. Oh, Christ, I didn't want to choose any. Never mind. I don't know any of his moves. I wanted to choose Ryu or Ken. But yeah. Just. Awesome background, awesome music, awesome sound effects, awesome graphics, awesome gameplay. It's like one of the big, and the Dreamcast is just the best console for playing 2D fighters. So, well over the moon with that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. And 
I'll get back to you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye-bye.